So let's analyze this question. X be a positive integer such that 7x plus 96 is divisible by x. Okay. And I need to find how many values of x are possible. So 7x plus 96 is divisible by x means what? When you divide 7x plus 96, when you divide this by x, the remainder is going to be 0. The remainder is going to be 0. That is what we mean by divisible by x. There is no remainder when you divide by x. It's exactly divisible. So before we solve this question, I want you to discuss about few properties of remainders. Okay, Few properties of remainders. First rule that you need to remember is, I need to find a remainder of sum of two numbers. Let's say a plus b. You have two numbers a plus b. I need to find the remainder when you're dividing by n. So the, the remainder is equal to what you need to do is you individually divide each number by n, find the remainder and add the remainders. That's it. So the final remainder is same as you take the remainder of each individual numbers. A, you divide by n, find the remainder. Then you find the remainder of the second number B, you divide by n, find the remainder, you add them up. This is the first rule. You can take an example. Let's say I want to find uh, 15 plus 16. I want to divide by 7. I need to find the remainder. I'm talking only about the remainder here. Okay. So one way you can solve it is you add them up. 15 plus 16 is uh, 31. You divide by 7. What is the remainder here? The remainder is equal to 7. 4s are 28. That's a close multiple. You have 3 left over. So the remainder is equal to 3. That's one way of solving it. Or what you can do is you individually divide each term by 7 and find the corresponding remainders and you add them up. So 15 when you divide by 7, what is the remainder you're getting? 1 is the remainder, right? 14 is a close multiple. You have 1 left over. Similarly, 16 when you divide by 7, the remainder is 2. So the first term when you divide by 7, you are getting 1 remainder. The second term when you divide by 7, 2 remainder. That means you just need to add these two remainders. So final remainder is same as 1 plus 2 that is equal to 3, which is equal to this. So this is one rule, rule of addition with respect to the remainders. Okay. There is one more rule that you need to know. Rule number two. For example, I want to find a remainder of, let's say, a times b when you divide by n. You have a product, I need to divide by a number n. I need to find the remainder. So this is same as you individually find each number, you divide by n, find the remainder. Let's say a by n, what is the remainder? Then you find out what is the remainder you're getting when you divide b by n, then you multiply the remainder. That's more easy. For example, I'm just giving an example here, okay? I want to find the remainder, let's say, 15 times 16 when you divide by 7. So it's it's 15 times 16. You don't need to each actually multiply it, find the product and find out the remainder. What do you need to do? You individually divide these number by 7. 15 when you divide by 7, what is the remainder? 1 is the remainder. 16 when you divide by 7, what is the remainder? 2 is the remainder. So the final remainder is same as 1 times 2 that is equal to 2. Let's take one more example. Let's say let's say you have more than uh, two numbers okay let's say you have 15 times 16 times let's say 20. i need to divide these three numbers product of these three numbers by seven and find out the remainder so individually like you know multiplying them finding the big number it's a, it's a time consuming process right instead of that you can use this rule you individually divide each number by seven find out the corresponding reminders and you multiply the remainder. That's it. Okay. So it's going to be each term you take 15 when you divide by 7, you're getting 1. 16 when you divide by 7, what's the remainder? It's 2. 20 when you divide by 7, 14 is a close multiple. You have 6 remainder. The final remainder is going to be 1 times 2 times 6, which is 12. So remember, 12 is actually greater than 7. In that case, what you need to do, again, you divide by 7. That's it. If you're getting the product, more than the divisor or the number you are dividing by 7, you again one more time you need to divide. So 12, you divide by 7, again find the remainder, which is the thing, but 5 will be the final remainder. So you can use these two properties whenever it's necessary. That will help you out to save a lot of time. Okay. So let's come back to this question here. So here, as I said, 
seven x plus ninety six is divisible by x. That means when you divide this sum here by x, the remainder is equal to zero. The final remainder you should get as zero. That means Individually, if you divide 7x, take the first term and second term, right? 7x by x, what is the remainder of each term when you divide by x? You add them up, the final remainder should be 0. Right? The final remainder should be 0. So, I know that 7x, when you divide by x, it's actually a multiple, right? 7x is a multiple of x, so the remainder is definitely going to be 0. So, that means to satisfy this condition, we can clearly say that 96, when you divide by x, the remainder also should be 0. That means x should be a factor of 96. So from that I can confirm that x is a factor of 96. And I need to find how many values of x are possible. So I need to find how many factors of 96 are there. So the answer is going to be the number of factors of 96. Again, it's not a practical idea to list down the factors of, uh, I need to find the factors of 96, right? It's not a practical idea to list down the factors of 96. It's going to be time consuming. So, there is a simple formula that you can always use to find the number of factors of any number you get, okay? What you need to do is, 96 is the number, I need to find the number of factors of 96. What I need to do is, you just need to prime factorize that number. What do you mean by prime factorization? That means you are writing this number or you are breaking down this number as a product of prime numbers. That's it. Very simple. You just need to break it down as a product of prime numbers or the powers of prime numbers. Okay. So 96, how can you break it down? So I can say that it's going to be 2 times uh, 48. Right? 2 is a prime number, but 48 is not. So I need to again do it. Again, I need to break it down. 48, how can you rewrite it? So 48, I can write as let's say 8 times 6. 40 is 8, 6 are 48. So what I need to do, I just need to break it down in terms of uh, prime numbers. That is, you have the complete freedom, okay? Either way, you can do it. The final answer should be 96 should be written as a product of prime numbers. So 8, I need to break it down as a prime number. It's 2 cube, right? 8 can be written as 2 cube. 6 can be written as 2 times 3. So what I need to do, I need to combine all the prime number here, that is 2, and 3, right? There are only 2 prime numbers, 2 and 3. I need to combine them. So, how many 2s are there? There is 1, 2 here. In 8, there are 3 2s and there is 1, 2 in the 6. So, total you have 5 2s are there. So, I can write it down. 2 to the power 5. So, the total there are 5 2s. And how many 3s are there? Just 1 3 is there. So, it's going to be 3 to the power 1. So, this is the prime factorized form. So, 96 can be written as 2 to the power 5. So, there are 5 2s and 1 3s. These are the only prime factors in this uh, 96 or this is the prime factorized form. So, once you are done with the prime factorized form, the number of factors is equal to and remember it's your choice. Okay, You have the complete freedom to uh, prime factorize it. Either way, you can use a long division method like this in 96 you divide by 2 again it's uh, 48 again you can say divide by 2 it's 24 again you can divide by 2 it's 12 again you can divide by 2 it's 6 again 2 this is 3 that's it you cannot do it further so how many 2's are there there are 5 2's and 1 3 so that's the reason 2 to the power 5 3 to the power so either you can break it down like this or you can uh, do the long division as you learned in the school or you can either do one of them the main point is you should be able to write it down in the prime factorized form so after this part is done the number of factors is equal to remember what you need to do is you take the power of the prime factors. 1 is 5. You add 1 to it. Okay. 5 plus 1. Then you take the power of the other prime factor which is 1. You add 1 to it. 1 plus 1. Then you multiply that. So number of factors is going to be 5 plus 1 is 6 times 1 plus 1 is 2. That's equal to there are total 12 factors are there. You can check it down. You can just list down the factors of 96. So, total there will be 12 factors. So, your answer is option C is actually the right answer for this question. So, remember to find the number of factors, you prime factorize it, you take the power, you add 1 to it, then you multiply. So, let me generalize it. Let's say a number n can be prime factorized as let's say x to the power a, y to the power b, and z to the power c. This is the prime factorized form. 
where x, y, z are distinct prime numbers. Okay, let's say they are distinct prime numbers. This is the sample, it's a general formula. Okay, I'm writing down. This is a prime, prime factorized form of a number where x, y, z are distinct prime numbers. Number of factors is equal to, number of factors is equal to, you take the power, you add one to it, and you multiply. So it's going to be a plus one times b plus one times c plus one. So you can use it wherever it's required to find the number of factors.